Alright. Welcome back to the game development stream. That is supposed to be every Sunday, but unfortunately I've missed two of the last Sundays, so my apologies for that. I tried to make it up with some gaming streams and whatever, but uh, those didn't pan out either. Now, you know, with the holidays and the year beginning and all, you know, all that kind of stress that that normally causes. I know I'm just making excuses here, whatever. The point is, we're doing it now, and we're doing it this Sunday also. And a lot has happened since last time. I've been coding this like almost every day, as much as I can anyway. And we're beginning to get to the point where, by the way, let me know if there's any audio issues, if mic is too loud, not loud enough, whatever. It seems to be actually bordering on the too loud territory if I'm reading that correctly. Anyway, yeah, today we're finally going to start making the first boss of this game. Boss fights are going to function a little bit differently since normal enemies have their static quote-unquote AI, which is just a very simple script that I've made that is slightly different for all, but they basically follow the same basic premise. They all have the same, you know, if the player is close, start chasing them. If, the, if they're close enough to shoot, start shooting them or do their melee attacks, whatever. But the boss is much more scripted, much less dynamic. It's going to do things in a much more controlled way. And this first boss is actually going to be a stationary boss, which means that it's much, much easier for me to like program all the attacks and stuff. But before we get into that, I think I'm going to show the progress that I've made in the level where the boss appears so far. Yeah, we get a new level. Fantastic, I'm already taking my headphones off because they're super loud. But there is music in this level also and I think it kind of fits. I don't know about you. If you think it's annoying, let me know. I'll turn the music down a bit. And yeah, we have the slightly, at the moment, pixelated and spread out version of the image that uh, my friend Needle Like was very gracious to draw for me. She's an excellent artist and I'm probably not probably not going to do it this stream, but at some point I'm going to have to adjust this image so it doesn't look so pixelated. The actual image is much cleaner than this. Yep, and this is the level, the seventh level in the final game, what I like to call the fungal lab. Oh, that dude just phasing through the wall. Let's pretend that, that didn't happen. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm gonna have that image, I think, placed during the in the in-between when every time you go from one level to another. It's really good. I really think the atmosphere suits well, but I did a lot of resizing and adjustments, so the version that I have there right now looks... Unfortunately, it doesn't do your art justice. <laughs> Sorry about that. But the original image looks great. Okay, this weapon is noisy. This level, since it's gonna be like the midpoint and probably the last level of the demo that I'm going to create, that I'm hoping to get ready by Satur uh, Saturday. Fuck, that's no. Way too, way too much pressure. I mean by February. It's gonna be like the last level of that. So it's gonna be pretty challenging already. You can see enemies are coming at me with much more aggression. Oh, you shit. Slime boils. the fuck out? <laughs> I know you're gonna make it good. Thank you so much. Just, I totally forgot about that and now I'm broadcasting it to the world, but why not? It's a good picture, so. Let's see if we can make it to the boss room so I can show you what it currently looks like. It even has a little animation going on and sound, which at the moment is just a placeholder, but I'm gonna adjust that a bit later. If we're ever gonna get there, because goddamn, they are just relentless. Lore-wise, this is gonna be the level where you, once I actually put like a 
more narrative elements in the game. This is going to be the level where you're basically tasked to find the antidote, antitoxin to all these mysterious serums that have poisons that have been going on in the space station, turning everybody into, well, this or killing them. Damn, I'm out of ammo. I really need to put more ammo pickups pick in this level. Yeah, we're gonna download the cure on whatever handy science gizmo we're gonna be using in the final game. And yeah, <coughs> apologies. From there, there should be like a short dialogue, like, hey, you have the cure downloaded, now you can progress, but there's some weird entity blocking your way. Better go check it out. Follow the arrow. This is probably the most useful feature of a coder in the game because I've noticed some people have had problems navigating the game. So I also made the levels a lot smaller. How did you get there? Sometimes my genius in creating AI surprises even myself. Oh. In this part, I gave the player like a choice, like which route you're gonna take. If you take the lower one, you'll be facing only one enemy, but it's much tougher than your average ones. And if it hits you, you're basically gonna be standing in an acid puddle and taking a shit ton of damage every frame. Good thing it's not very smart though. And it's lacking any sound still. That's a shame. I feel like these basic enemies are actually more threatening because they're much faster. See? That guy can Yeah, that guy can do things. He has intellect. For a slime monster that melts when you when he dies. I also adjusted the color and the blood textures here because now it actually looks like it's blood instead of just red paint, like bright red paint. Now it looks more like ketchup. Ooh, corpses are piling up. Doesn't look good. Floor texture changed. Also, this is the level where you can find the ghost suit thingy that allows you to pass through walls. Which is going to be your hint on how to fix all this. Well, I really don't like that light clipping, but I need to fix that later. So yeah, there's an impassable... Oh my god! It followed me from all the way over there! Jesus. It's not as dumb as I thought. Okay. This is going to be annoying if I don't deal with it. Come on. Clearly I'm a better programmer than I thought. But now it's dead. So yeah, you're supposed to upgrade your suit with uh, this. I really I increased the resolution, but I didn't really do anything about the text, so they look kind of blurry. But yeah, now you can pass through walls. Woo! And there's the slime ball spawner, which is a new entity that I made, which basically creates these endlessly until a certain point. You can destroy it. But I mean, why waste ammo? We're here to check out the big bad. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Placeholder sound. Oh, wait a minute. It's not doing the... It's not doing the funky thing. Something is wrong here. Okay, I'll kill myself and reload the checkpoint to see... Yeah, this should be animating. What the fuck? Okay, it's one of those things, one of those game maker glitches that probably when I unpause and unpause something happened, but if I just plunk myself over here and resume, and we're gonna pretend that it never happened. I should put some chill music on the background while I'm doing this, but I'm afraid, like, a lot of it is going to be copyrighted. Yeah, it's screaming at me, and now it has the cool little animations, which is not much at the moment. Obviously, it needs some adjustment, but the point is to have the tentacles moving, like, all the time. Shake, 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 shake. Uh, yeah, it's, and it's... The actual boss doesn't really move, but it has, like, two... Oh, which I forgot to change actually. It has like two states, this one and the attack state. 
make it look slightly different. Also, this, this music also slaps. Also, I showed this to my girlfriend and she said that this doesn't really look like a brain. It's supposed to be like a brain from the front, but I think the brain parts are not really uh, prominent enough. Like I should increase it so that it covers these parts. I don't know. Yeah, you can see the cursor. This music really fits to a boss battle though. And yeah, right now it's not attacking me because I haven't programmed that yet because that's what we're here to do today. Also, one, like there are, people have commented about the appearance of this thing. And many have had their own in interpretations of what this is. Like somebody, my, <laughs> my girlfriend at first thought this is a house because now that I'm looking at it, yeah, this shape is a bit unfortunate. If I don't want to be mistaken to a house because it has, you know, it has a little door here roof we even got some uh, hedge fences <laughs> some hedges and uh you know that's so unfortunate that's on me that's unfortunate but then another person said it looks like a bug you know this these are like two massive fly eyes leaking some sort of green goo but it's supposed to be a big brain with a mouth and two tentacles from the front. Obviously, it's gonna need some redesigns to make it more prominent, but hey. Okay, time to kill you. Kill your ass. No, I, like, I like that effect when, uh, which I made, that when, <laughs> when it loses a chunk of its health bar, it actually the flash has to indicate like, hey, you did something. It has a pain sound, but it's very subtle. I don't know if you can even hear it with the music. Wait, I know what it is. It's because it's not... The channel is not correct, the audio channel, so it's playing on the background instead of on the foreground. Let's see... Sorry, I'm scrolling way too fast, because this is not really important. We just need to find... Oh no, it is. Five. Okay, just need to make it louder, I guess. But yeah, this is in this part. He's basically forced to. <laughs> That's gonna play every time. I'm probably gonna need to comment that out. If you can't even listen to your own sound effect for five times, then you should probably change it. But yeah, you can see the area around the elevator is totally blocked. And the boss is also a solid obstacle. So you know what to do, what to do. Of course you have to destroy it. But it's not gonna be easy, because it's not gonna be just standing there. Yeah, you can hear it a little Arr! Which isn't what I wanted it to sound. It should be more like a lizard-like sound effect, or like a spider hiss. A snake hiss. Oh, no, spiders hiss. A snake-like hiss when you takes a lot of damage, it's supposed to be like or something like that. I haven't really decided yet, actually. And this is supposed to be like the... Okay, yeah, I'm pausing does... doesn't break the animation, so I don't know what's going on. Yeah, this is supposed to be like the big entity controlling all the monsters, which are just mindless parts of the collective controlled by this thing. Yeah. Wait, did the health bar just drop so low? Did I imagine that? Let's see. That's the first bug already. No, it's not. I think it was already, like, at that point. This should work correctly. That's a bit boring. If it's just standing there, let's actually give it some attacks. The basic principle is the same as with uh, enemies. It has a the op it's an object with a state, and the state is executed every frame, and the state changes depending on you know 
whatever is happening next. Like sometimes it's gonna be idle, sometimes it's gonna do something. So right now it's gonna actually do stuff, which is shoot. And instead of shooting at me directly, I have made it so it will instead shoot these little uh, points. But problem is, I don't know how to loop through them, or I know how to loop through them, but I know how to loop through them and have a delay going on at the same time. Because if I loop through them and then you know call the shooting script, it's just gonna shoot at all of them pretty much almost simultaneously, like one sixtieth of a second like between the shots. Actually, that might look cool also. It may be a little bit too difficult and it's not exactly what I wanted, but let's try that first. So with objective boss point, So target becomes the boss point and then it will shoot. So at right now I should should shoot to no to eight. Actually, how many are there? Twelve, I think. Simultaneous bullets in all of these red points over here. That's actually a cooler attack than just spraying one by one. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, I might have to comment out the scream that it makes. Yeah. Also, I forgot to actually call this state, so you know. <clears throat> uh, it's boss trigger, I think. Yep. So this is a little invisible object that you trigger when you enter that room, and it's gonna start doing that stuff. So. First off, what we want the boss to do immediately is to just wait a little bit to get you adjusted. So state equals boss one state wait. State target, which is the state we want to execute after it's done waiting, is going to be uh, the only one we have so far. Spray to right, which is shoot. The word spray is. Mm. Probably not what we want for here. Then state wait duration, I think. No, wait, these need to be first before it changes the state. State wait duration is going to be, I have written in my notes here, five seconds. So five times 60 equals 300. So 300 steps. And then it should go to spread right. But I might have also forgotten to actually assign the variables. Indeed, I did. So, spider right is fungal brain shoot right. And weight is just enemy weight. So that logic is still the same as with the normal enemies. And idle is fungal brain idle, which it will do nothing. It will just sit there. Uh, yeah, let's see what will happen. So uh, right now what I should do is wait five seconds and then shoot 12 bullets. Oh God. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> Oh Lord Almighty! Yeah, it didn't quite go as it should have. Actually, let's see what's happening without us dying. It's gonna be a lot more complicated than the normal enemies. Is that five seconds already? Oh shit! Mm. Now it doesn't trigger anymore because we. We loaded the game. Fuck. Okay, so in the actual game, there's gonna be some sort of a cutscene.
like a short cut cutscene where the guy just walks and then hits the trigger. But eh, we're gonna have to for now do the walking ourselves. So fast trigger, move this a bit so we can manually trigger it every time. There we go, yeah. So now let's see what's gonna happen. Yeah, so a lot of things going on here. First of all, it's not actually... They're not actually coming from the boss. That's the unfortunate thing. That's easy to fix. So instead of X and Y, it's just gonna be objective boss one, X and Objective boss one Y. And yeah, then it shouldn't do this constantly, but that can be fixed later. Let's just reload this and see what happens. Fortunately, my computer is fast enough to do this reloading thing quickly because otherwise this would be a pain in the fucking head. Hmm, they're still not coming from the thing. Interesting. Ah, okay. Hmm. This will also need to be changed. Also, when it's shooting, the issue, issue actually have the attack sprite. So sprite index equals SPR attack, which I defined earlier. The only difference is that its mouth is slightly open, slightly larger, and it has a little glow in its mouth. Come on, do it. Woo! Woohoo! <laughs> Hi! A bullet hell game. Except you literally die as soon as you touch it. Also, we can probably turn off the sounds. For not turn off the sounds, but disable these sounds for now. Also, five seconds. This is the longest five seconds ever. Bugged out again. Hmm. Oh yeah, because, right, it's not, because I reloaded the game instead of restarting it, there are more problems, a lot more trial and error than I would have preferred. So it's going to be parent object is p other, and then blah blah blah. There. Yep, yeah, here they are. So with all these, when I'm saving and loading the game, all these extra. Entities that have their own variables need to have things set in the code because they don't dynamically just remember. So, for example, for this trigger, once I walked into it, it will turn like it will turn off, so to speak. But when it saves and loads, it will continue to be off, which is not what we want. So, what was the name of the variable? used cool so use needs to be actually you should always be false in this case because we can only save before the trigger maybe when i can do it properly in the actual game you know it will actually save in the middle of the situation but right now 
And maybe I should have the boss have some kind of proximity trigger. So if the player comes to this area, you know, it immediately goes into the hostile mode. Actually, yeah, that's much, much, much less annoying to deal with them, to mess with these triggers. But let's just do this real quick. So if it's objective boss trigger, then used equals false. And then here we'll do if point distance pont point distance from the player Well, first of all, I always have to do this in Game Maker. First, we have to check that it exists. It's like with the other programming languages. Check it. You have to check if something is null or not null or not undefined before you can actually do anything with it. So if the player exists and is within, well, I don't know. That's 1782.0. Oh, wait, that's not looking at the wrong coordinate. 940, 1090. 200 pixels is probably okay. So from here to here. Hmm. Is it even enough? Yeah, it should be enough. So if it's, if you are from 200 pixels, then do the same thing as what would happen if you step on the boss trigger. Right, yeah, I think that should work actually. Blop. Of course, here we can check. That the health bar doesn't exist yet. Oh, yeah, and of course, state. If state equals to boss one state idle, which is the one that it has by default, because it will not have this anymore after being triggered. Is that everything? Creating this whole boss is going to be super tough, so it will take a lot, a big effort, but once it's done, it will be much easier to create future bosses. I think I'm only have, gonna have two in this first edition. Like the, when this game is complete, it'll probably only have two bosses. Okay. All right, yeah, but I already know that there are things to be changed here, so it should not just brrr all the time, obviously. But how to make it sure that it only does it the amount of times that I want. Well, with this little handy variable here. So if time shot is less than eight, we do this. And for every, oh shit, actually, yeah, because we're using width, we're actually going out of the scope, so we have to 
use also like this kind of variable. So yeah, every time you shoot, do plus plus, and then times shot equals times shot. Once you're done. So if it is, we put it back to zero and we go back to the waiting mode, which is already forgot what the actual, yeah, these. So right now we have created, if it works, probably won't, but we'll see. We have created a simple loop, you know, wait five seconds, pra, shoot eight bullets, wait five seconds again, shoot eight bullets. Obviously get, it's gonna get more complicated as it goes on, but the first attack stage should be done. Let's hope that, oh, yeah. No, no, this should work, I think. Because this width is, should act like a for loop. If it doesn't work, then we're going to have to create separate versions of all the... Yeah, cool, it works. Holy shit, that's super cool, actually. I want Maybe I want it to be like that. Actually, this... Now it could be already a boss battle. Like, just, you know... Wait, attack, wait. That would be very repetitive, but as it is, it's almost a functional boss battle. I haven't actually made a death state yet. And also the sprite should return back to normal after it shows after it's finished shooting. But damn, that's really cool. Pretty easy to dodge to be honest though. Maybe you should shoot each one, uh, I don't know, like twice or something. Oh, God. Well, I don't know. This just one attack, so whatever. Yeah, I like this actually more. We can change the names later, but we're gonna... Originally, I wanted to have, like, first shoot from left to right to each one, like, pia, 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 and then shoot from right to left, pia, 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 pia. You know. But... Shooting them all at the same time, it's much more challenging and more exciting, to be honest. So, great. And yeah, remember to change the sprite back to the default. Ah, so first attack, done. Much faster than I expected. But this dude has several other attacks. Which I will do now. One thing I want to do is have it shoot a beam. If you come too close, it'll just like liquefy you there, but I haven't actually drawn it yet. Maybe I will during this stream, but we'll see. I don't want to expose my poor artistic talents just yet. So instead I'll do the other attack, which I had in mind, which is it's just going to do like, I guess at the end of each cycle, is to gonna show you throw spawn eggs these little bastards here which when destroyed will create monsters so not only does it make it more difficult but it's gonna create uh, more challenge for you what am I talking about yeah it's gonna create more challenge for you but it's also gonna give you some ammo pickups for you to grab in case you run out of ammo potentially because it's all random drops so who knows maybe you're only getting materials but this one is going to be a bit too hard if they all launch at the same time but hey we'll see what it looks like so the name of the state is 
throw grunts. Ray later is gonna throw other enemies too, but this one is fine for now. So we create another function for that. Fungal brain throw grunts. And well, actually it's exactly the same logic as this for now, for this example, except maybe only create four instead of eight. And I wish it could cycle through them in a random order. Like that is the most annoying part. That's why I'm probably gonna have to, instead of plunking uh, 12 boss points there, I'm gonna probably have to create like boss point one, boss point two, and then choose them randomly from a, from a list or something like that. But this is fine for now. Throw spawn eggs, which is a function that doesn't exist yet. To be honest, yeah, what's the point of creating extra functions for all these since the function, like basic thing, is the same? We just need to change the thing that it shoots. Oh no, and the time also. Well, that's fine. I think I have those written here. Oh wait, no, I don't. Well, okay. So time shot is zero. Times to shoot bullets is eight. And times to, actually let's make it 12, a bit harder. Times to shoot grunts four. No, no, no. We don't need to separate ones, just times to shoot. Default can be eight, but we're gonna change this variable every time we change to the correct state. So, don't need this shit. Oh, wait, you need that shit, but we don't need this shit, so. Oh, hmm. what am I talking about? Yeah, this is already there. So let's make this 12 and this four. But yeah, we didn't actually need those, I forgot. But what we do need is a bullet to use or something like that. So default can be objective boss bullet whatever the name is, boss one bullet, yeah, right. And every time we change the state, like so, for example, uh, here, we do this. And in here, We use the spawn egg instead. So objective spawn egg one. And change this to this. And now I should pretty much do it. But how do we get from this state to that state is gonna be another <laughs> question. Well, I guess after it's done shooting yeah, yeah, right. After it's done shooting, so I just do throw grunts. And throw grunts can be assigned to this script. So I should do it. Although, again, it's just doing them all at the exactly the same time, which is either going to be really horrible or efficient. Come on. Oh yeah. Missed. Huh? The fuck? Hmm. Okay. So it shot something, but 
didn't exactly work. So what gives? What gives? The logic should be the same. But maybe the spawn eggs are invisible for whatever reason. Sometimes I notice that Game Maker likes to turn my objects invisible. Doesn't really make sense because. Yeah, also, it should be this one, not the other one. Oh, fuck them. Yeah. The object names have changed. But now they're both visible, as far as I can see. Oh, but they don't have to, yeah. They're lacking the user event, which is the thing that actually propels them to their destination. Should be easily remedied. Where's the boss bullet? There it is. Also, it was pretty easy to dodge this. I'm not sure how to fix that. Yeah, user event zero. Same logic, but let's make this uh, go slightly slower so you have time to react to it. Also, this, hmm, maybe we should also make so that as soon as they hit the boss points, they get destroyed because right now. They will just keep going until they hit the wall. But maybe that's okay also. So now if we take a look at our script. Yeah, this looks about right. Let's use spawn egg two. I have the sprite name and the object name confused, but whatever. I want to create those little yellow bastards at first because that's you know they should be the easiest one to deal with. And then later, when the boss's health goes beyond a certain point, it was gonna start throwing those those tougher bastards. So first shoot, nice. And the next is hmm. Gosh darn! Gosh darn it to heck! Right. This is missing the user event also. Easy. And now we are prepared to face the boss. Hopefully. I don't know. Shit, I don't have my phone with me. Probably not unnecessary. Let's continue on. So, music start. Whoa, damn, that hurt a lot. Then. Oh, what? Huh. <laughs> they just keep going. That's funny. Let me see that again. Whee! Okay, yeah. Forgot to destroy them on collision, so they just keep going. Also, oh, that doesn't look like four to me. That's way more than four. I mean, it's way less than the bullets that he's shooting, but. Okay, okay. Fine. So. This one wasn't created all the way through. It's okay. Small setback. So, yeah. And they should have a smaller range. So maybe 20. 
Now it's working. Also, maybe if they collide with the player, they should also be destroyed. Let's do it. Ow. Next one. Oh no. That's too much. Yeah. This is why I need to create. Uh... Actually, those bullets should hurt these monsters too. Let's see. Ah, that's cool. be honest I'm kind of okay with this <laughs> like this game is gonna be really hard like this but <laughs> but on the other hand you know the boss is doing my work for me oh no obviously don't do that so often you know, just as a curiosity, I kind of want to just make him feel like this. Oh, Jesus. Ah, oh, there's so many. Oh, no. <laughs> They're filling up the screen. At least I'm not hurting for ammo. But yeah, since they even shoot back obviously gonna create <laughs> some minor problems <laughs> that's so cool though like but it's not what we want because the boss should be challenging on its own merits and not through the use of phone keys and yeah the range bit more than 20 30 is probably okay do the same for egg one and yeah this is basically giving the lore that these things come from eggs laid out by this creature which would be like a environmental storytelling way to tell the player that hey This is uh, this creature is sort of the daddy, granddaddy of these monsters. Uh, three speed is probably okay. They look pretty slow, to be honest, though. That's also why it didn't make very far because it's only three half of the speed of the bullet. Four is probably okay. Same with the other one. Uh, here? There. Now I know that I didn't do much, but I want to. Ju I just want to look and see how it looks. First, the shooty. I'm just gonna be here. Ha <laughs> ha! Sucker. Next. Okay, that's already quite, quite fast, actually. Not even sure how I could avoid that. Better make it... Long range, but... Short speed. Low speed. Short speed. So, two for the speed. And... Um, 40 for the time existed. Better make it 45, maybe? Yes. Now we'll see. No, not bad. Not bad at all.
shooty. Oh. Yeah, don't stand here while that happens. That looks okay. The fact that the bullets do damage to these things is uh, making up for the fact that these flunkies are quite dangerous. But obviously, this game is going to be impossible to play like this. Oh, the boss is still doing shit. Yeah, it's still spitting stuff, even though... Uh... But yeah, I guess it's not shooting at me, it's shooting at the boss points, so that's okay. Okay, uh, just a second while I go grab my phone. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, the range needs to be longer, because if they all get created at the same spot, it's going to create some problems. But let's not mind that right now. Let's do here. So boss point at the moment is a child of the other. So... What we're going to do is create child objects for the boss point. And just have it be boss point one, boss point two, and so forth. And those are the things that we're actually going to plunk in there. So we can do both. Like we can put something into all of them at once if we so desire. Or we can just use the individual ones. And this doesn't even need a sprite anymore. So, bye bye. And we'll duplicate this. Yeah, it doesn't have to actually have any functionality. It's just literally just a place, a tile in the level that we are targeting with our shit. Plum, plan. Plum, plim, no, 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 and bang, Jesus, that, those names really stack up, huh, so boss point two, boss point three, boss point four, yeah, I, I wish there was a way to fast forward this part, you get the idea. While I do this, uh, let me tell you about future video plans. So there is going to be possibly a Daikatana video. Because I haven't seen that game explored enough, to be honest. I'm still, <laughs> with the amount that I played it, I'm still not convinced that the game is actually better than its hype. It's pretty bad pretty bad but at the same time it's not like horrendously bad and yeah I sympathize as someone making a somewhat janky indie game right now I kind of sympathize of course you know Dagatana and my project are coming from hugely different budget budget points and development teams and things like that but wait I forgot to put the god damn it Got to put the parent, so I have to do that individually as well. Oh well, more chance to 
ramble on. So apart from that video, I'm thinking of like doing just transferring away from the web webcomics, which is it's fine. It's they're okay, but I'm I've totally lost my interest in making videos about them. Especially and I know it's giving me a niche, but at the same time, they're not something that people generally care about so much. You know what I mean? In terms of views, they like unless it's something like control alt delete, which you know everybody agrees that is uh, horrible. It's not gonna get the amount of views as something about like, like a video game or a movie or a TV sh show or even a comic book video would get. Okay, maybe it would get more than a comic book video. So yeah, what I'm gonna focus on right now are Analysis of video game mechanics. That's something that I always want to do because, you know, in general, reviews are, go over both mechanics and story. And that's not what I want to do. I want to have a laser tight focus and a niche for myself because just doing video game reviews in general, I mean, it would be fun, but it's not going to make me stand out, especially at this point. So doing a series that delves deep into the mechanics of games is something that I really would like to do. So apart from Daikatana, and I don't even know what order I'm gonna go th these through because I need to finish Daikatana first. I'm going to also go through games that I basically love and I'm going to examine exactly why they are so good or if they even are as good mechanically as they're hyped up to be. For example, I know for a fact that like the PS2 GTAs, you know, Vice City San Andreas, they're really janky mechanically. They feel almost bad to play. Like San Andreas is okay, but Vice City... The movement and shooting in that game is awful, even for a PS2 title, because, you know, Max Payne came around the same time. And that that's a fun shooter. So a company the size of Rockstar should definitely have been able to create some better mechanics. Okay. So now we can plonk... the new boss points in and it leap. And now we can go through them one by one. And there's still one more. There it is. Nice. And now we drag the individual ones here. Make sure not to have any duplicates. And now we can use the snap feature so that it snaps with the tile, although it doesn't really matter so much. So you might have already guessed that these are now the points where the bullets and stuff are going to be targeted. Except now I can do, like put them, for example, put them all in an array and then randomly choose a couple to target.
All right. I'm going to keep the bullet thing as it is because it's kind of cool. A bit hard to avoid. Maybe a bit, bit unfair, admittedly. But you can get away from it. And if I change the role to actually giving you invulnerability for that duration, then maybe it's it's okay. Yeah, that should be it. Now, it's, since they're all part of the parent object, it should still work. But for the spawn eggs, let's do some. Some delays. So look, we make it so it's kind of delay and it will specifically target only the points that we want. So we'll throw maybe five little dudes in there because I noticed that you can kill quite many of them at once plus the boss will also target them. So maybe you know three or four is too little but like you know, ten is just too much. And yeah, like I said earlier, this is not going to be used nearly as often as the other forms of attack. This is just like going to be something that happens at the last stage. And actually, you should have a longer delay after this period so that the player has enough time to, you know, just go at it and start wailing on the boss. So, how do we do this thing? Do we do it randomly or do we just always target? Let's just right now always target certain positions. So, if times, okay, if times shot equals to zero. Then target is objective boss point one, and so far. So if it's hmm, actually, yeah, maybe it's more than six because we need to shoot five dudes. You need to be less than six. Yeah. If it's one, let's target. Oh, I don't know, maybe. Number four. Just in the future, this can be somehow determined randomly. Once I, I should, I think I should do that off screen and not try to search like how to do this in GML. Like choose random thing from array because I'm sure there is a function or some kind for it, but I don't think it would make for a good stream if I start doing it now. It can be six. So if time shot equals to three, we will do eight. Oh. There. I got a new keyboard that should be less noisy than the previous one, but I don't know. I still miss my old silent one that unfortunately got destroyed by a by a rabbit who also destroyed my mouse recently. I'm pretty pissed off about that. I don't need meat, but if I did, that rabbit would be in trouble. That's all I'm saying. For legal purposes, that was a joke. Okay. 
And now, yeah, we don't need to loop with the width. We'll just So now it will do that. And now after every shot, so call that and after every shot, it should go into the wait mode for just a little bit, let's say half a second. Now we can actually use time shot because yep like this so now I should do this wait for half a second and do it again to a different target if I'm not misremembering. And yeah, I need to target this again. So throw grunts. Cool. Nice. This this is looking good. Come on, shoot me. Yeah, sadly that the sprite doesn't show very long because of that, but now it should show a bit longer. Yes! Mi amor! Shoot. Didn't hit as many as I would like. No! Oh, come on. Oh, oh, this is a challenge. Now, this is more like a... We're finding a bullet hell boss or something like that. Is that really five seconds between those attacks? It feels like a hell of a lot more. But yeah, right now it could be feasible to defeat this thing. Of course, this is much more simple than what I want. And it shouldn't keep doing this every fucking 10 seconds. Ah. Because you will quickly run out of both bullets and health at this rate. <laughs> This is a lot of fun already, though. I'm digging this. If only there was... Unfortunately, there's only a limited amount of health in this room. Like, you can get those... Maybe it should put throw slime balls instead of... Spitters, I think. Or it should... In the beginning, shoot slime balls. And then, because they drop energy, right? And then later on, it should... It should instead throw... Like these things. Because I think if it starts throwing those spitter things, because they have so much health, it's probably going to be too annoying. These guys already shoot you, and while it doesn't do a lot of damage, you know, it adds up. Oh, 
Oh no. Yeah. Also, I think because we're gonna be losing a lot of health in this round, I think every time it uh, it shoots a spawn egg and the spawn egg breaks, it should have a random chance of having health inside it instead of an enemy. Just my opinion. So fortunately we all already made the sprite for that other egg thing. Spawn egg one. There we go. So just instead of creating the spitter, this is gonna be a lot less pain in the ass. We just create a, I think it's enemy five actually. Enemy five, a slime ball. Can't have enough of those. And they will most likely drop health. But for the other ones, since they don't, we're going to make it so that there's a chance that health will come out of this egg instead of... Actually, we can make it for the both, but this one will have a higher chance of containing health. Also, we could even do it so, like, if the player is close to dying, then, you know, more health would appear dynamically. But for now, let's just try to keep the challenge up. So var health, var drop health is a random range from, oh, I shouldn't be here actually. I need to So a percent chance. For this one, we'll make it so that if it's between 20 and 40 then create a instead of this it will create health just let's just throw logic in the air for a second cuz we care about as a player, we don't care about if it makes sense that health will just suddenly randomly appear. We care about, am I going to beat this boss or not? Boom. Now for the other one, we'll make it slightly less likely. Let's say between 20 and 25, because they already drop health, so it's not needed to happen. I forget to copy the variable name. And also I need to make sure that it will destroy if it hits the player because, you know, it's just logical that way. That can be annoying too, but you know, it's like at least you're given an incentive to dodge these projectiles. And damn, I love that music. I'm so glad I found that. Thank you, Kevin MacLeod for that track. Credits are included in the game. Hey, woo, wah, yeah. Come on, shoot. That is a long time. Oh, wait, yeah, after the... Yeah, I forgot. I like this. This is like getting into the rhythm and knowing when to avoid and when to attack. I have accidentally created a pretty cool boss here. Nice. I'm really digging this. I'm so glad it's actually working the way I pictured it in my head. Not quite as cool looking visually, but just the fact that the functionality is what I intended. It's really cool. Ha! <laughs> 
I'm just getting addicted to my own game here, because oh, damn, that's pretty cool. This is pretty difficult, actually, uh, like this already, but it's not too difficult. When we create the so I'm gonna have like a few other attack modes then we'll see how it actually goes actually it's pretty easy but maybe it's just because I've played this game so much already see it's already at this last last health bar. Piece of cake. If you can't pass this boss, I'm shocked and disappointed. But yeah, I think I will keep the bullet attack like that because the alternative that I had in mind is actually sounding really super simple to dodge. And I want to create some danger. They all died. Beautiful. Oh yeah, I guess it's dead. It's in the I killed it. It's in the die state. So I didn't func put any functionality, so it's just gonna sit there like an idiot. Perfect. What next? Yeah, one of the attacks that I intended is because you know the tentacles are there for something. And I want uh I want them to like the boss to like swipe with both tentacles. In succession but the unfortunate thing is that I have no idea how to actually make it move the way I want it to so since it would take a lot of unnecessary stream time to try to do that let's uh, Leave that later and let's do another attack, which I'm going to draw a beam kind of thing. But even before that, let's change, because right now we have way too many states, since I'm going to simplify this a lot, probably for the better. I, tend, I notice that I tend to put things way too complicated and then... And yeah, then this thing happens. Actually, we only need tentacle, throw grunts, throw slime balls, and shoot. Hurt probably doesn't need to be its own state. I was think thinking like if you hurt enough, it'll like flinch for a while. But since it's already pausing after every attack, not even needed. That's all we need. Obviously. I'm going to need to edit the code a bit. So this will be shoot. Then tentacle is going to be just one script. First do left, then pause and do right. Hello, doggy. And throw slime balls. Which is going to be the same as this, but which is going to be throwing slime balls instead. Although probably those can be, we can put a little bit more. Because I mean, they're a little annoying bastards as well, but they don't shoot, which makes them 
slightly less annoying to deal with. Right. But yeah, also a couple of things. All references to shoot should now be deleted. I mean, be, shoot should be the one replacing spray to right. What else is there? Boss trigger. Out of here. What we got? What we got? Okay, so let's create this. Hey, dog, stop creating noise. I don't know if the mic caught that. The sensitivity is pretty low right now, so it should only catch my speech. From the look of things anyway, yeah. And not the miscellaneous noises coming from the background, but it's hard to say for sure. So let's create that script. Throw slime balls. God, I love it when things end up being much easier. Huh? Is it? Oh, yeah, it's right. Much easier than I initially expected. Like that. And we will. And slime balls obviously will be. Let's make it eight. So seven actually. So you know five. Seven, seven, six is enough. Also, this has the, I don't know if it's a benefit or not, but now they will all end up going in uh, the same places every time, which is something that player can, you know, pick up on and be like, ah, oh, wait a minute, they're going to the same place every time. Also, that doesn't need to go left to right like that. It just looks visually better. If they go randomly, that might be better for gameplay. Decisions, decisions. So let's see. Let's see what happens. So now we change, we won't be getting grunts at this point, we'll be getting slime balls instead. While we're waiting, we, oh! Yeah, that, since that does more damage, it's probably good to keep it like that. Nice, that's good. Since they don't shoot. Oh man. What a waste. Okay, I think the health, I guess, is going down a bit too fast. I did use all of my ammo, but still. And these things are so fast that it's hard to hit them with the bullets of the boss. Eh, no. Still fine. Obviously, we're gonna have to inst put like some sort of limit in place so we cannot actually crash the game by spawning in infinite, like these things infinitely. I don't know, slime balls might be too easy. Not that, you know, they are annoying actually. They can hurt you if they want to. But since they drop health already. But what will be, because I think the spitters are going to be too hard and they would deal too much damage. Hard to say. And zombies, you know, 
they are not created that way. I'll probably change them to speeders and just have like, like just have less of them here. Or maybe it could have all three. Not bad, actually. First, it's gonna be these. You know, easy. Then the grunts, the yellow things, be harder. And then finally, spitters. Which is just gonna be a fucking pain in the ass. Easier to just probably ignore them. And now it's dying, but yeah, we don't have the functionality yet. Very nice. So the beam. Hmm, maybe you should do like, I'm also thinking it can be random what it throws actually. Because right now we have to hard code the pattern. So I'll first throw these, then throw that, then throw this. But it could instead be random, like biggest chance to get slime balls, uh, and then slightly bigger, slightly lower chance to get, oh my God, the blizzard outside is horrible. A slightly bigger chance to get lower chance to get the grunts. And then finally, you know, if you're really unlucky, you get the spitters. Yeah, that'll probably, probably be better. But now let's draw a very simple beam sort of thing. Drag it over here. Hey, you shut up. It's just the wind outside. Don't need to bark at that. Shh. Excuse me, this is a very important stream going on at the moment. So... Let's see here. There are different kinds of beams, like it can be either like become bigger and bigger, like I have with the pistol right now, or it can be something that happens instantaneously. And just for simplicity's sake, I think this one is gonna be instantaneous. So let's look at the size of the room first. So I wanted a beam that shoots from the mouth to the towards the player. Our time it is, yeah. We're gonna be drawing the next attack real quick. That's probably gonna be the last thing we do before we finish the stream. I want to make a beam that travels from the mouth towards the player and then like uh, then it hits the wall and it's done. But I'm thinking how big it is should be, first of all. So from here to the mouse to the end of the room is roughly 130 pixels. So it doesn't have to be so much. Well, yeah, 130 sounds fine. So let's make it 130 height and width should be 30 let's say yeah nice and the shape well again everything can be polished later we don't need to make it so good looking right now but I guess just you know you, you know your basic Kamehameha shape I guess except I'm gonna make this green because it fits with the theme the monster will be shooting green beams. So yeah, for those who just joined, where we are creating the first boss of the game. Thank you so much, Halo Potato. Good luck to whatever it is that you're doing also. Yeah, we're getting the first boss of the game. And for that, we need to create attacks of various sorts. and the pattern in which the attacks appear. So like 
shoot this, wait for a few seconds, then shoot the other attack, maybe do melee, these kind of things. The melee is going to be the hardest one to implement, so if I get managed to get it done off screen, I will show show it off in the you know net future stream, I think. Yeah, I guess something like this, just a beam that has maybe a little lighter thing in the middle and maybe a tip. Hopefully this doesn't end up looking too phallic. Just this kind of thing and it can create some particle effect somewhere where it lands. Um, more. I'd like to keep it symmetrical, but I have no idea. I'm not experienced enough with pixel art to know how. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so it needs one more here. I really should undergo some pixel art tutorial class or whatever just to see because obviously the basic principle is pretty simple right you know you draw things pixel by pixel but how to actually do it is always a challenge like there are so many techniques and things you could, you could know Also, I need a sound effect for this beam, but I don't have one right now, so I'm just going to go without for, for a while. I don't know why every time I use the paint can tool, it always goes over the borders. I guess, I guess it's because it doesn't consider diagonal borders to be borders but I don't know that's that's bullshit how am I gonna create pixel art by only using straight lines impossible and we can use a slightly bigger brush though do 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 no oh, not that big for the middle part So it should look like a beam of energy being shot at you. It doesn't have to be like so straight because It'll only be visible for a few, like barely a second. And when it is visible, if it looks totally symmetrical, it might actually be worse. Something like that, I guess. From the preview window, it's gonna look more closely to what it is gonna be looking in real reality in the game. Not reality. My game is not reality yet. So it's gonna be yeah, this kind of energy beam thing. It'll look better in action, trust me. Maybe even brighter thing in the center. Like nearly white. Actually that's is white already. That's better. There you go. That is the beam. Export this as SPR energy beam. I don't know. Okay, boss beam, since only the boss is going to be using this. Then we'll bring it into the game maker as a sprite. With beams, I'm always having trouble because the collision 
is just totally fucked. But maybe this one... Actually, yeah. One problem that might be causing that is that it sh this should actually be flipped. This should be horizontal. But that's easily done. So 30 to 130, we just make it 130 to 30 times 30. Because Game Maker, the default direction is always going from left to right. So the sprite should also be facing that way. And then uh, rotate counterclockwise, I think. Where did it go? Okay, that sucks because it fucking disappears. Okay, let's make it smaller and then... Then rotate it. Damn. If only I had realized to do that from the beginning. Because it's only going to be... Uh, going from you know top to bottom so this wouldn't even be necessary but unfortunately it just is and then bring the size back so now it's all fucking blurry great could this work Actually, it doesn't look bad. By making it more blurry, it actually doesn't look so pixelated. And I'm digging this. Fuck yeah. Boss beam. Nice. Origin point will, of course, be the tip. And the collision mask doesn't have to be the whole beam because that's going to be a pain in the ass to avoid. Just the center area. Not even the full length of it, just maybe this much. So if you collide with that, you know, it's going to do a shit ton of damage. Boss beam. Then create an object for it. So with the beam, instead of a projectile that travels from point A to B, the beam will just, I guess, flash for... I don't know, one or two seconds, do damage if it collides with something, and then disappear. Maybe it'll actually even fade out and fade in in a cool... Well, it shouldn't fade in, but it should fade out. So, object, boss beam. We'll put this in the enemy, like, enemy bullet parent category, even though it's not a bullet, but just if the game is paused, this will ensure that it will also pause the beam.
and even though it won't travel anywhere, the direction will still need, still need to be defined. So we'll need to create a user event because the direction is only defined not in the creation stage, but in this like dynamically in the script stage. So waste plus bullet here. We don't need speed. We don't need, yeah, we don't need speed. We only need the direction and the image angle and whether it collides with something or not. Although even that's maybe in the beginning, we'll just see if it collides with uh, enemies and let's just make it go through any obstacles. First, the beam will only launch if the player goes too close. And in the future, I guess it will it will be an actual attack. Actually, I think that's all the time we have for now. I'm gonna have to cut this short, but I will do another gaming stream this Sunday and maybe something else during the week. Thank you so much for watching and hope you all the best.